Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. So I promised to tell you what home automation and home kit are. Well, here you have it. Turn on the ceiling fan. Got it. There you have it. Turn on the surgery lights. Done. Voila. Home automation is literally Rosie the Robot come to life. Now, for all you younger folks, you're not going to have any idea what the hell I was just talking about. Rosie the Robot was the robotic servant of the Jetson family, a cartoon I grew up watching as a kid. And she was a physical robot. She had a little maid's apron and a little hat, and she ran around the house doing things for the Jetsons. So you might ask her to turn on the ceiling fan. You might ask her to lock the front door. Whatever the case was, she did it for you. Home automation is Rosie the robot without the robot. It's your house doing stuff for you. It's pretty awesome. So, what is HomeKit then? Well, to understand HomeKit, you have to understand home automation a little bit in that there are all these manufacturers of devices that you will buy and put in your house to automate stuff, such as your fan. And all these manufacturers have applications designed to control their products. Well, you can quickly end up with five, ten, maybe more applications that you need to control your house. And only a maniac would want to use ten applications to control their house. So Apple being Apple and the king of simplicity, they stepped in and made HomeKit. I like to refer to it as the one ring. Okay, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Okay, yes, J.R.R. Tolkien reference for all you geeks out there. So HomeKit brings all of these apps into one clearinghouse where you can control your home and all the home automation things that you've put into it. Now I have to tell you, some people, despite the fact that Apple is the most valuable company on the planet, some companies still have not figured out they should ride Apple's coattails. So some companies are making their home automation products incompatible with HomeKit. Don't ask me why, okay? Maybe they were dropped on their heads as babies. I don't get it, I don't know. You have others still who are working hard to get HomeKit compatibility. And then you have others who for some reason tied their, their wagon to Google or Alexa or what have you. But the vast majority of the cool products are HomeKit compatible. And combined HomeKit and home automation, it allows your home to be more comfortable more convenient, more secure, which is a big deal in this day and age. So how do you get there? Well, I told you I've got five steps that you can follow, and I'm going to give them to you right now. Number one. All right, number one. The first thing you have to do is you have to evaluate yourself. Is home automation for you? To be perfectly honest, not everybody is a tech person, okay? And if you're not a tech person, then you might want to run screaming right now. But if you are a tech person, maybe home automation will work for you. You also need to consider your budget. All of this is fairly new stuff, and it's pretty spendy. Now, some of it can save you a lot of money over time, but the initial investment is pretty substantial. You also need to think about other people in the home, you need to think about your house itself, and you have to put all of that together and decide, is this even something I want to screw with? If the answer is yes, move on to step number two. Number two. For the second step, it's important that you take a very close look at your home. Don't just look at all the rooms. You have to consider upstairs, downstairs, front yard, backyard, even your garage. Anywhere you think home kit can be of value. Write it down. Make a list. 
understand the zones of your home and use them as you move forward. Number three. Step three, research, 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 research. Look around, ask friends, do internet searches for HomeKit and home automation. Find out what's available. Find out what can be done. Decide what sounds good to you and apply it to the plan you made in step two. Come up with an idea and work off of that as you go forward. Number four. Step four, decisions. It's time to make decisions. Okay, we have a plan. We know what we want to accomplish in our house and in what areas. But there are a zillion products out there that can do all of the functions that you are thinking you want to do. For example, right there, that is one of my security cameras. And it watches the living room so I can check in on my dogs and it's not the first camera I had there. I actually bought a competitive product from a different manufacturer trying to save a few bucks and I regretted it. I didn't do enough research, I tried to cut corners and I paid the price for it. I didn't do enough research. I just kind of leapt into things and I had to deal with it. All right, security cameras right here, that's an area you really want to try not to cut a corner on. I, I can tell you from experience. Now that's going to be a whole other episode and I'll talk about security cameras then, but for right now let me just tell you, don't cut corners on your security, okay? It's not worth it. You're going to regret it. So what's going to be first? Is it security? Is it climate? Okay? Both of those are great starting points. Security, this day and age, you cannot have enough security. It's getting really sketchy out there. But maybe you live in an apartment where you don't want to invest in that. I don't know. Maybe you live in Mayberry and, and you don't need it. I don't know. I'm not you. Only you can answer that question. The other thing I mentioned is climate. Okay? I have two HomeKit compatible thermostats controlling the air and heat in my home. And I have never been happier best money I ever spent and I'm, I'm not even, even kidding as I tell you every episode I'm coming to you from Las Vegas we get 118 at times alright my house has never been more economical and more comfortable and more convenient since I started controlling the air with automated thermostats and home kit number five all right it's time to talk a little turkey with you for number five. This, and, and you're gonna think I'm joking, and I am absolutely deadly serious here. I am not joking. This is by far the most important thing you have to consider before making the leap into HomeKit. And, and please, it's gonna, you probably are gonna give it a little snickle when I say, say what I'm gonna say here. But I'm not joking with you, okay? I'm trying to save you a lot of time, money, frustration, and fights, okay? Number five is the PA factor. PA factor, and that means partner acceptance factor. Now, it used to be the wife acceptance factor, but I personally thought that was really kind of short-sighted in this day and age, so I've changed it to the partner acceptance factor. It is a real thing, and I'm deadly serious about this. The partner acceptance factor is a scale of 1 to 10. And you use this to make a determination on what you're going to do in your house as far as... You, you can actually use this for anything, but it's really applicable with HomeKit and home automation. It is a scale of 1 to 10. It is a sliding scale. It is ever-evolving. And in my opinion, if you are considering putting in a home automation item and it does not receive above a six, scrap the idea. Don't do it. It's a mistake. Huge mistake. You're inviting frustration and heartache. Don't do it. 
you need at least a six and a half on the PA factor before you can move forward. Now, let me give you an example of how to apply this. Okay, I've never done any home automation, and I've decided I'm going to start really, really simply. And I decided I'm going to get a LifeX light bulb. One, just one LifeX light bulb. And I'm going to put it in one of the lights in our living room so we can try it out. And I've looked at all the other factors, and those came first because you need all that information to get an accurate PA scale, okay? So I've looked at everything, and I've determined that that one light bulb is going to get a PA score of a six and a half. Okay, so I've got this one LifeX light bulb, and I put it in the lamp in the living room. And I tell my wife about it, and I say, okay, hey, what I've done is I put this special light bulb in here. And instead of using the switch, now you say, turn on the lamp, and she'll do it. Or you can use this app to turn it on and off. You can change the light's colors. We can set it to a timer, whatever we want to do. Now remember, our PA score was a six and a half here. I can almost guarantee you that it is going to drop in the first week, probably below the six mark, probably down to like a five and a half or even a five. But because we started at a six and a half, it's okay to move forward. And we're going to ride it out. We're going to let her play with it. And by week three, it may be up to a six. By week six, it may be up to a seven. But the point is, there was an acclimation period. She got used to it and even got to like it. And now it's a success. Now let's take the same light bulb. But instead of putting one in the lamp over here, I did the whole room. Okay? Did the whole room. Exact same light bulbs, exact same initial PA score. I tell my wife, don't touch any of the switches. Do everything by saying, I can promise you, instead of dropping to a six or a five and a half, in that first week, the PA score is going to drop down to a three or maybe even a two. There's virtually no chance you're going to recover from that. Don't bundle stuff together unless you, you come up with an item that gets an eight and a half right out of the score, right? It's right up front, like a door lock. Gets an eight and a half right off, right out of the chute. Go for it. Stick it in there. Okay. Don't worry about it. But something like lights where she's going to have to learn a new way to handle things, not using the switches, thinking differently than she's used to. I'm telling you, you got to use that PA score to your benefit. Now, if you did it slowly and in pieces, unlike what I did, yeah, I went amok and I paid the price. That's why I know what I'm talking about here. You got to take this slowly and let her build a comfort level with it. And if you do that, the next product that you want to try, maybe a light, a, a switch for a, a different area or something like that, it's going to have a higher PA factor and right out of the gate because you took your time with this first item and gave her some chances to get to become friendly with it. Now, you've gone through all five steps. Start to build your world the way it works for you. For me, by happenstance, it was climate control came first, Security came second, all right? That's because we had to change out the air conditioning system and new thermostats came with it. But for you, it could be anything. You might live in an apartment. It might just be a simple item of buying a nano leaf. If it is, go for it. If it's a lock, go for it. A security camera, a light, whatever it is, go for it, love it, and get with the automated world, you're gonna love it. All right, bottom line, home automation is not a must, 
It's nothing you have to have in your life, but it can make your life easier. It can make your home more comfortable, and it can absolutely make your home more secure. All right, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, put them right down below. I'm going to get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. Until next time, be good.